Dealing with overflows, text wrapping, line breaks, word breaks, and so on in CSS is a huge pain because there's like 10 different properties that all kind of do the same thing, and knowing exactly how each of them work is incredibly difficult to understand, which is why in this video I'm going to be going over everything you could possibly need to know about all the different overflow, line break, word break, and so on properties out there, and I'm going to definitively tell you which ones you should use in each situation so you never have to worry about which one is the right one. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And to get started, we're gonna start with overflow property, which is the easiest property to understand. And you may already know this property. So if so, I have timestamps in the description. You can skip ahead to the sections that you're more confused on or not familiar with. But for this code, we just have a single div with some text inside of it. And you can see if we look at our styles, we have a specific width and height set. And right now our text is overflowing that container. It's just too large. So we can come in here, we can specify an overflow. By default, it's set to visible, which means all the content overflowing is visible. But if we wanna hide that, we can set it to hidden. And now you can see everything inside of our container that's going past our container is completely hidden. And if we had a padding on our container, for example, 20 pixels, you can see it even overflows into that padding section. It's only right when it hits the border is that it actually becomes invisible and hidden. So it goes all the way up to the edge of your border and then it hides your content. Now, if we wanted to actually scroll through this content, we could change our overflow property to scroll. And now you can see we have a scroll bar that allows us to scroll through this content. But the downside of using an overflow with scroll is it gives you scroll bars no matter what. For example, you can see we have scroll bars at the bottom of our section for scrolling left to right, even though we don't actually need that. And if I change our height to something like 200 pixels, you can see all of our content fits, but we still have that scroll bar. This is where the overflow auto property comes in because this just gives us scroll bars only if we need them. So you can see we have no scroll bar on the bottom, but we are getting a scroll bar on the left and right because our content is overflowing the container. If our height was larger though, you can see we no longer are getting that scroll bar on the right hand side. Another really handy thing you can do with overflow is actually specify the direction. So I can come in here with overflow X and that's only going to work in the X direction, or I can come in here with an overflow of Y to work in the vertical direction. This just gives you the ability to slightly more finely tune exactly what overflow you want to do. So for example, I could hide only the vertical overflow or I could hide only the horizontal overflow. It really depends on what you want to do and how things are going to work. Now the final overflow property I want to talk about is is a rather new one and a somewhat more advanced one, and that is going to be the overflow property of clip. If I come in here and I specify overflow of clip, you'll notice immediately it doesn't look any different than hidden. And that's because by default, clip works just like hidden unless you specify the overflow clip margin property, which allows you to specify how far you want this to be able to overflow the container. For example, if I type in 20 pixels here, now you can see my content is allowed to overflow its container by exactly 20 pixels before it's cut off. This may seem like a weird property that you want to have, but it's a very common issue where you want to have some part of like a header, like maybe the background of a box of a header to slightly overflow the content directly below it. This is a perfect use case for overflow clip margin to be able to add that overflow just slightly into the content below it or next to it or wherever you want it, which is a really handy feature. The only other caveat you need to know about overflow clip margin is you must specify it on both the X and Y direction for it to work. If you specify it on just like the X direction or you specify it on just the Y direction, it's not going to work as you can see. So you need to have it specified in both directions. This is currently a bug in the browsers and it's been around in pretty much all of the Chrome based browsers for a very long time. So I don't even know when they're going to get around to fixing this issue, but it is something to be aware of. Also with overflow clip margin, you can actually specify some other properties besides a hard coded pixel value. For example, I could specify border box right here. And now my content is actually going to overflow into the border. As you can see, it overflows to the edge of the border and then it stops. I can also specify the padding box and it's going to overflow into my padding. So if I come in here, the padding of, for example, 10 pixels, you can see it overflows into my padding. That's essentially the exact same as how hidden would normally work but we could also say content box here, and now it's going to cut off right where the padding starts. So we can really specify exactly where we want this overflow cutoff to happen, and we can also specify how far we want it to actually flow past where the normal cutoff point is going to be, which is really great to be able to have these extra levels of customization. Now, this is a bit of a newer property, so it's not available in absolutely every single browser. For example, the specifications for like border box are only available in like the Chromium based browsers. It's not in Firefox or Safari yet, but a lot of browsers are slowly adding these features. And the nice thing about this overflow clip property is that most of the time that you use it is for small stylistic things where it's not actually going to matter if this property doesn't actually work. Instead, what you could do is you could write an overflow of hidden here to hide the overflow by default. 
And then if this clip property is supported, it'll actually use these properties down below. So you can get a little bit more customization while still working in older browsers. Now, before I dive into the complexities of wrapping words inside of Overflow, I wanna talk about one more Overflow-ish related property that deals with scrolling, and that is the Overflow Anchor property. And I'm just gonna be using the MDM documentation for this because it has a really good example on their site. So here we can click this Start Lottery button, and all it's going to do is constantly add brand new numbers to my container. And the idea between this overflow anchor property is just to specify if we want to anchor our content in a specific spot in the scroll bar or have it move when new content is added. So right now this is set to auto, so it's going to just do the automatic behavior, which is the default. So if I scroll to a specific section, you'll notice that new numbers are being added to my page. You can kind of see the scroll bar is slowly getting smaller as new content's being added, but I'm staying in the exact same place on the page, even though new content's being added. This is the default behavior. If I swap this to none, and now I scroll to a specific section on the page, you'll notice every time a new number is added, it's actually pushing me down on this page. So it's not actually anchoring me to a specific section of content, it's constantly moving my content as new content is added to the page. This is why by default, auto is the property that is going to be used, but if you want to not have this behavior, you need to set overflow anchor to none to avoid that particular behavior. And the next couple properties I wanna talk about all have to deal with text wrapping. So I'm gonna change the text that's inside of here to essentially just be a couple words, and then we're just gonna have like a really long word, just like this, something that's definitely going to have to wrap, and then we'll put a few more smaller words in there. So you can see that by default, this really long word is actually overflowing my particular container. I'm gonna remove some of my padding and my border, make it a little bit smaller so we can more easily see this, and we'll remove our overflow properties as well. But you can see that this word right here is well past the size of my container. It even adds a scroll bar to my page, and that's because by default, if you have one really long word, it's not actually going to do anything to that word and it's just going to overflow your container. Now, obviously, as you saw, if we had like an overflow of hidden or something on here, it'll cut off that word so you can't see the rest of that word that's in the page, but that's probably not what we want. And instead we want to do something to wrap this word onto a new line. And there's technically three separate properties that do this. There's the word wrap property, there's the overflow, wrap property, just like that. And then finally, there is the word break property. And these all behave slightly different from one another on exactly what they do. The one thing I do wanna mention though, is that word wrap and overflow wrap are actually the exact same property. Word wrap is just an older property that was never actually meant to be a part of the browser, but all the browsers implemented it. And overflow wrap is the correct version of that property. So if you're thinking about using word wrap or overflow wrap, always use overflow wrap because that's the specific property that's supposed to be there while word wrap is just there because people used it and it was working and they had to keep it around to make sure old websites still worked. So just use overflow wrap and never use word wrap. They both do the exact same thing. Now the first property we'll look at is the overflow wrap property because in many situations, this is all you actually need. So this has three different properties that you can set. Normal is the normal behavior where no wrapping at all occurs. And then there's two other properties that both work very similarly. We have break word, and that's just going to allow you to break a word if it needs to wrap onto a new line. So you can see if I save this now, this word is breaking in the middle and wrapping onto this new line down here where it's ending right here. So instead of overflowing my container, it's actually just making sure it wraps that word so it fits within the container itself. The other property we have is called anywhere, and this works almost exactly the same. As you can see, when I save, it actually looks exactly the same right now. The only difference between these two is how they interact with the min content width inside of CSS. So if I set my width here to min content, just like that, and I give it a save, you'll notice now I have my content much, much smaller. It's essentially wrapping every single one of my words. I can change this a little bit by making it so that it's only going to wrap this particular very large word. So I'll come in here, wrap this very large word in a span, and we don't even need to give it a class. We can just select the span itself. So I can say span. I'm gonna specify this to have my overflow wrap just so we can see what's working here. And you can see what's essentially happening if I minimize the amount of content inside of here, just like that. And I'm gonna make this word a little bit different letters so we can see what's going on. There we go. You can see it's essentially shrinking down the size of my container to be the smallest possible word. And then it's making this word wrap as many times as it needs to to fit in that minimum amount of content. That's what anywhere does. If I were to use break word instead though, you can see what's going to happen is it's still going to break my word if it needs to. I can make my word a little bit bigger so it actually will have to break that content. There we go, get that a save. It's actually just overflowing because there's no maximum size on here. We'll specify a max width. 
of 200 pixels. There we go. So now you can see it's going ahead and it's breaking that word in the middle so that it'll fit, but it's not making it as small as humanly possible. That's the main difference between these two. If you use anywhere, it essentially makes it so that it's going to be the minimum size that it can possibly be and break the word as many times as it needs to. While if you use break word, it's only going to break the word as many times as it needs to make it fit within the size of the container, but it's not going to break it excessively to make it as small as humanly possible. This is a pretty niche difference between the two, but honestly, for the most part, break word is probably what you're going to be looking for, and you don't actually need to use the anywhere property unless you need that specific use case of min content. And if you wanna learn more about this min content property, as well as things like fit content and max content and so on, all these other intrinsic sizing, I just released a full video on that. I'll link it in the cards in the description for you. So overflow wrap is really useful if you wanna control how a word wraps inside of a container if it's too long to fit inside of there. But if we wanna deal with how a word actually breaks, we can use the word break property for that as well. So this word break property really only has three values, break all, keep all, and normal. You may see the property break word used every once in a while. This is not a property that you want to use. Break word essentially does the exact same thing as setting overflow wrap to anywhere and leaving break word as normal. This is why they essentially removed this property. It's still in the browser and if you use it, it'll work, but they've actually deprecated that property so it no longer does exactly that. So what's coming here, fix our width back to 200 pixels. We're gonna remove our overflow wrap and we'll talk about the three properties of word break. Normal by default does nothing. It doesn't break any words. They just stay exactly as they are. Very similarly to how overflow wrap didn't wrap anything by default. Then we have the option for break all and we have the option for keep all. If we use break all, what that's going to do is it's actually going to break our word, but you'll notice there's one slight difference between how word break works and overflow wrap works. So if we come in here with overflow wrap and we set this to break word, for now I'm gonna comment this one out and you can see what's happening is it's putting our word on the same line as it was supposed to be on and it's just breaking it wherever it needs to and putting it onto the next line. While if we use overflow wrap, what happens is it attempts to put the word on a new line if it's too big to fit in its current position, and then it's going to break it if it needs to. This is really useful because sometimes your word may be short enough. Let's just shorten this word down a little bit, a little bit further. Whoops, too far. There we go. It may be short enough where if you move it onto a new line, you can see here that the entire word is able to fit by putting it on a new line, but if you kept it on the same line, it wouldn't actually be able to fit. So if we specify break all, you can see that it's keeping that word on the same line and actually breaking it in the last two letters or on a brand new line. While if we were using overflow wrap instead, it's wrapping that whole word onto a new line and only breaking it if it needs to. So an overflow wrap of break word is really useful if you wanna make sure that you break words the least amount as possible to fit all your content inside of your space. While break all is really good if you wanna essentially cram as much content as possible into one space because it's going to break any word that overflows the particular container. The other caveat to deal with with break all inside a word break is it actually won't break Chinese, Japanese, or Korean symbols apart unless it's a specific section where it's supposed to break those words apart. And that's just because the way those languages are written, if you take two symbols and break them onto multiple different lines, it could completely change the meaning of the word or sentence that it's trying to describe. That's also why they have a property called keep all. This only matters if you're using one of those languages, Korean, Japanese, or Chinese, and this is essentially is going to prevent any breaks from happening inside of the word in those particular languages. But if you're not using one of those languages, keep all works exactly the same as normal. So that's what you should know is it's essentially the same as normal unless you're using one of those three specific languages. So when you're deciding which one of these properties you should use, Generally, I would say that overflow wrap with break word is going to be what you want if you want to wrap a word onto multiple lines if it's too long. This gives you the most amount of flexibility by trying to fit the words as big as they can before they wrap so that you hopefully have the least amount of wrapping possible. This word break property is honestly something you generally will not need that often because you can just use overflow wrap instead. This is really great though if you wanna put all of your content onto one particular line without actually dealing with any space being used up, even though it may break your word more often than it actually needs to just to fit all the content as tightly as possible onto as many lines, as few lines as possible. So up until now, we've talked about how you can deal with content overflowing your entire container. We then talked about how you can deal with words when they overflow your container. And now I wanna talk about what happens when those words actually do overflow the container. What can you do to the text to notify the user that things are overflowing to make it easier for them to understand what's going on? There's quite a few properties that allow us to modify exactly what goes on with this particular situation. But the first one I wanna talk about is the hyphens property. This has three things, auto, manual, and none. If we specify none, then it's just not going to have any hyphens at all. 
If we specify auto, it's going to automatically put hyphens into the words where it's breaking onto new lines based on your specific language preferences for your site. So right now you can see we have our entire site set to English. Depending on the language you use, there are going to be different rules for hyphens and not. I'm gonna make this text a little bit longer too so we add a little bit extra space. I'm gonna come in here, set our overflow wrap to be break word. And you can see when we specify overflow wrap of break word, it's adding in that hyphen at the end of our word because we're wrapping it onto another line. Now, if we remove this hyphens auto property, you can see that it's actually trying to put it onto a new line like this. So the hyphens property kind of works very similar to how word break works if you combine it with this break word property. So this is where a lot of the confusion comes in because these properties interact really interestingly with each other to make them work in different ways. So this one is just putting it onto the same line and adding a hyphen. But you'll notice if we use word break with hyphens, we aren't actually getting a hyphen at all, even if we're doing break all into this section here. And if we specify overflow wrap of anywhere, it should still give us a hyphen. So we'll come in here, put anywhere, remove this, and you can see we still get that hyphen. So it's very interesting how all these properties interact. And again, this is why I generally prefer overflow wrap because it kind of works more like I want it to when I have that hyphens property being used. Now, if I specify manual as my hyphens mode, essentially it's only going to add in hyphens where I manually specify inside of my HTML. So I could come in here and I could say, you know what, I wanna put a hyphen right here inside of my word and I could put a ampersand and type in shy and that's going to be a hyphen that only shows up if it's actually needed so i can come in here and you can see right after this section of text is where my hyphen is showing up inside of my word and if i were to move this for example to be earlier in the word you can see now the hyphen is showing up earlier while if i move it later you can see the hyphen is showing up later inside of my word so the manual mode will only add hyphens where you specifically tell the text where the hyphen can be added while the automatic mode will just add them wherever it makes sense for you to actually have them added now the next property to tell users that your text is overflowing is to actually add an ellipses at the end of your text. So we can say that we're going to have text overflow just like this. And this has essentially two properties. Clip is just going to clip any text that is overflowing. And ellipses is just going to add ellipses to the end of your text if it's overflowing. The key about this property though, is it only works if you have exactly one line of text. And to make sure you always have one line of text, we need to specify our white space and we can say no wrap just like this. And this just means that there will be no wrapping that occurs anytime we have like a space or an enter inside of our text. So now you can see we specified our white space to have absolutely no wrap. And we also need to make sure that we specify that we don't have any breaking or hyphens going on. We're gonna remove all that. So we just have our white space not wrapping and we have our text overflow set to ellipses. And I'm actually gonna put this inside of our div instead of inside of our span, because I want this to happen for our entire block of text here. So now if I give that a save here, you can see that it's still not quite working as we would expect. And that's because we also need to hide the overflow from our container. So we need to have some type of hidden overflow. Now you can see since our text is being hidden from the overflow, that it is now getting these ellipses added to the end of it, letting the user know that there is additional text that's being hidden from them. And again, this property only works if you have your overflow being hidden and if all of your text is on one line. If I remove this white space, no wrap, and I make my text box much smaller, for example, we'll have a height here of like 20 pixels. You can see it's still overflowing the content. It's a little hard to see, but if I make it 25, you can see it's still overflowing, but I'm not getting any ellipses at all. And that's because again, it must be on exactly one line of text. This is quite limiting. So there's an additional property you can use where you can clamp your text if you have multiple lines of text that you're using. So let's get rid of that white space, no wrap. So we still have multiple lines of text. And here I'm gonna use a property called line clamp. But this line clamp property is only available with the WebKit prefix currently in all the browsers. The actual line clip property on its own doesn't actually work. So if we set this to two, you can see nothing actually happens. So to make this actual property work like we want, I wanna add a few more lines of text just so we have quite a bit of sections of text to work with. And I'm even gonna shrink down this particular text so everything fits inside of our container. We'll just add a little bit more so we have multiple lines of text. There we go. And now we can limit this to however many lines we want. But like I said, this line clamp property on its own doesn't work. Instead, we need to prefix it with WebKit dash. Now doing that still doesn't actually fix the problem because there's two more properties we need to define. First of all, we need to specify the display to be either a WebKit box or a WebKit inline box. So we're just gonna use WebKit box. That again, still doesn't fix the problem. So the next step is to add in the WebKit box orient. And we need to specify that this is going to be vertical. Adding all three of these properties together means that our line clamp will work. Now, if we save, you notice that it's giving us these triple dots at the end. 
Now, the one thing that you'll notice though is our content is still being shown. This is because our box has a height of 100, per 100 pixels being defined on it. If we specify this as auto instead, what it's going to do is it's going to specify that my box is only these two rows tall based on all three of these different properties. Now, if I didn't have an overflow hidden, all this other text would still show up, which is not ideal. So generally you want to have some type of overflow hidden or clip on your property to hide all of that extra content. So you can see here, I've now clamped to two lines. I could say three, and now we're clamped to three. And if, for example, I specified six or something that was more lines than I actually had, you can see it just shows all of my content with no ellipses. While if I had like three, you can see it adds those ellipses at the end of my text. Now with all these different prefixes, you may think this is a property that only works in like Chrome or a specific browser, but this is actually something that's been supported in all of the browsers for quite a long period of time. So I know it looks really weird that you have to write it out like this, but this is something that is supported in pretty much every single browser and you should be able to use with no issues, even on browsers that are a little bit older. As you can see from this video, overflow and wrapping is an incredibly complex topic, but it's not the only complex topic in CSS. Things like the sticky position, how scrolling context work, display properties, flex, grid, so on. There's so many complicated things in CSS. So if you wanna absolutely master all of those complex CSS skills, highly recommend checking out my complete CSS course. It's going to cover everything you need to know about CSS and it's short enough you can complete it in just a couple days. So if you're interested, I highly recommend you check that out. It'll be linked down in the description below.